guys, welcome to today's tutorial. Today I'm going to have a go at turning one of these bunnies into a cake. Let's begin. So let's start by dyeing our coconut green. We're going to do this now so it has time to dry while we're working on the cake. I'm going to mix mine in some glass jars. You can just use a food bag if you prefer. I've got a tiny bit of water that I'm going to mix my food colour into. Uh, I'm going to use the sugar flare colours for this now. It's up to you which colours you want to use. These are gel colours so they're quite thick. So if you take a little bit of this, you want to sort of dissolve it into the water. Just because it's difficult to get it to mix with your coconut when it's so thick. You can use the gels in the squeezy tubes. Could probably even use your airbrush colors for this guys as long as it's an edible food color so i'm going to pour a little bit of this into my coconut and i haven't put a lot of coconut in my jar at a time just in case for any reason i don't like the color also it's easier to mix it up if you don't have a huge amount in there because you can see the bits where most of the water collects at the bottom tend to get stuck at the bottom of your jar I usually find it looks lighter than what I think it's going to look like. You can always add more colour. Or you can swap to a different shade of green if it's not the shade that you like. I'm going to mix a few different greens for this one now. So we're going to put it on some kitchen roll. So let it dry out a bit. It's a bit too dark this one but we'll see so while that's drying we're going to work on our base because of the shape of the rabbit and its head kind of sticking out quite a bit and the ears quite large we're going to have to have something part way up the cake to support everything otherwise i think that head and the ears are going to drop off We've got a wooden base put little legs on it so that when we put the metal threaded rod through there it's not going to catch on our work surface. So now the base is going to have one of these washers at each side. It'll have a nut holding those on and this rod will go through the middle. So it's easier to put the top nut and washer on first, then put it through and put the bottom washer and nut on. Tighten them up nice and firmly. It is important they are on firm. Just make sure that's on nice and tight. So if we look at the height, I want my board to come to sort of the widest part of the face and just slightly under those ears. So from above, if I put this on top of the head, we can see if it sticks out anywhere from the face. So I think I'm going to trim it down a little bit at each side at the back. I don't want to take too much off. And then a little bit at the front here as well. I'm going to measure to the height that I want the board to be. So it's about 17 centimetres up on the rabbit. And then we're going to measure against this here. And we're going to mark it on the threaded rod. I'm going to put a clear plastic straw over the dowel so that it protects the cake from coming into contact with this. We'll have to sort out the nut and the washer later to make sure they're food safe as well. So let's see where my line came up to. So let's cut this down here. This is actually, I've cut this just slightly lower than 17 centimeters. Oh, in fact, we've not allowed for that nut there. So let's see again. So straws on, we've put another nut, let's put another washer, and then let's put this piece of card that's going to go inside the head on there as well. And don't forget to stick it out this way, because the bum of our rabbit is going to go here on the board, and the face is going to stick out this way. So can you see, if I face the rabbit's body straight towards me, the head is slightly off to one side. So we want to do the same thing. 
with this, we want to put it slightly to the side. I'm going to line up the rabbit next to the post for whereabouts I want it to go. And then what I'm going to do is just mark the point at which the front of it touches the board and the back of its legs and then the back of its tail. Let's see if I can draw this on the board itself. It's about here. I'm going to put some armature wire inside the ears just to help keep them up and the ears I don't think we're going to be able to make those out of cake I don't think they're going to be firm enough I just got the craft wire from the armature wire from a craft store so let's make them roughly the shape of the ear we're going to make them a little bit smaller because when we build the modeling chocolate on top of that I think we're going to use modeling chocolate anyway um, when we build that onto it it's going to bulk up quite a lot Let's see if the other one is the same size. Yep, just a slightly different angle. So let's make another one the same. So I've got two wires the same. They're just twisted over at the ends. And I'm actually going to use some modeling chocolate to bulk out the ears with rather than having cake in these. I'm going to use some green color mill to just dye them to a green color. So this color won't fully show because we're going to cover the whole thing in coconut, but just if we've got a little bit showing, at least it's green underneath. I've split my modeling chocolate into two pieces, and then I've created this kind of shape. And what I'm going to do is just press down with my rolling pin in the center, and I'm keeping these ears pretty thick. And I'm just kind of rubbing it on each side of my rolling pin for the shape, and I'm popping it out. And it gives me roughly the ear shape as it is. I'm just going to cut a little bit off that bottom end, and we're just going to repeat that for the other ear. So now getting the wire in was the trickiest bit. I had tried cutting a little gap in the back and trying to insert it in there. I did find this very difficult. So if you guys have different ideas of the best way to get the wire into this, let me know. I think I maybe should have tried to press this wire in while it was the original rough shape that I'd rolled sort of before I actually squished it onto the rolling pin itself. You can see it took quite a bit of playing around to get it into this ear. And I ended up having to patch up the back a little bit as well. Now, I'm not too worried about it being a bit untidy at the back because we are covering it in coconut. And the other one, I just cut the wire in half and I just stuck the wire in through the middle. Just checking the size against my rabbit. I'm actually just going to unscrew this top bit and we're going to add the wires from the ears under this washer and nut that's on the card that, we'll, that the head will sit on. So they're going to go around here. I was worried they're going to flop off a bit, so I actually put some little cocktail sticks in as well, just so there was extra support. And these, again, are going to sandwich between the washer and that little card that we've got. So I've kind of wrapped the wires around that a bit, and I've decided to put another washer over the top. So I'm going to stick a washer over that to hold it in place. Richard's kindly volunteered to help hold it in place for me because I was finding it a little bit tricky, this bit. And then we're going to put the nut back on the top, and I need to screw that on really nice and tight now. Now, I think the card for the face looking from above isn't quite long enough, so I'm just going to cut a little bit more of my cake card and we're just going to pop that under the washer like so, so that should hold it in place. I'm just going to cover my bit of rod up here at the top in kitchen foil just to try and make it food safe. And I'll have to do that with the washers as well. In fact, I'm just going to cover the whole of this head bit in, um, in the tin foil. It just makes life a little bit easier for me. We're not going to get much cake in the head, but I'd still like to put it in there still. So I'm just cutting out a piece of greaseproof paper, guys, because my wooden cake frame isn't food safe. So you don't want to put cake directly on that wood. You can either put a cake board on top of it or something in between. Now, the shape of this, which I'm also cutting out in cake, is actually the shape of the bottom of the rabbit. So the rabbit that I've got, the plastic one, I've drawn around it on some greaseproof paper and this is the shape I've got. And I'm going to cut that shape out for my first layer of cake. And I'm going to keep hold of that greaseproof paper as well because that's I'm going to sit that under my cake so that it's not in contact with the wood on my board. So now I'm going to cut some more layers of cake and I'm going to cut them similar-ish shape. I'm not going to put too much detail on them because we're going to carve this once they're all stacked up. 
and I just need to stack them as high as the the rabbit so the rabbit's back goes to I think I just need a small off cut there so let's start with that bottom one which has that greaseproof paper or baking parchment on the bottom and what I need to do and I don't know if this shows very well for you guys but I'm going to put a little slit or cut out a thin rectangle out of each piece and also out of this base so that I can slide it around the metal rod so can you see just there, it's slid around there. I'm just going to stick it down to my board with a bit of buttercream and let's put our cake on there. You can use a bit of your off cut of cake to fill that gap back in again. I'm just going to use some buttercream now. I'm using green buttercream for this one just because it goes with the green coconut that we made earlier. And I'm putting that same slit in each layer of cake now and we're just building it up. So it's fairly sort of straight up and down at the moment. I think I'm going to have to cut quite a bit off this. I'm going to push that top one a little bit further forward. And let's fill in the gaps. So I also want some on the top for the head. Like I say, we're not going to need much up here at all. It doesn't look very big, but I am going to bulk out under the head as well with a little bit of modelling chocolate. I've got a piece there that's just missing. Let's stick some more cake on there. So I'm just going to compare it to the shape of my rabbit, my plastic rabbit that I already have. And I'm just going to now measure it. So I'm going to measure sort of what height the top of its back comes to so that I know where to cut. And we're now just going to cut all this cake down, carving it. You can keep those off cuts. You can make cake pops out of them. Or like me, you could just eat them as you go along. I have, I don't know if you've noticed, just stuck a little bit more cake under where the neck is just to fill that out. And I'm also having a look at where the backs of the legs go. I'm trying to put a little cut in. And then we're going to thin out either side of the back. Just go steady with it. Only take a little bit off at a time, guys. Take a little bit off the head. So again, just shaping the head so it's fairly rounded at the back. And it's coming quite narrow at the front. And I'm going to cut out sort of a little slit either side where I want the eyes to go. And then this is some of that leftover green modelling chocolate that I had from the ears. I'm going to put a bit under its chin. And I'm also just going to bulk out its cheeks just a tiny bit here. So once it's carved, you're going to cover the whole thing in green ganache. So I'm using ganache for the outer edges rather than buttercream because I don't want to risk it falling apart. Ganache will set a little bit firmer for me. And this is just cream and white chocolate that I've mixed together for this one. And I'm just using the colour mill in there to get the colour I want. I'll put links below the video, guys, to everything that I have used in the video. I do sell most of these products in the shop, in my shop even. Um... But you can see what colours and things I've used that way. So I'm going to cover the whole thing in this ganache. I'm just going to put a thin rough layer on first. And then I can always go over it again once it's set if I need to. Also, you might see that some bits when we're doing the ganache don't look quite the right shape. And we can alter them. I still got to do, I think, a bit more carving further down on the body. But I just want to get the head ganached so that I know it's there, it's sturdy and it's not going to fall apart. So whilst that ganache is sitting on the face... I can do a bit more work on the body. So I'm cutting around like the feet, the backs of the legs, sort of its chunky sort of thigh bits on the back. Just cut a little bit at a time, guys, and take a step back, have a look at what you're doing, check it looks right. Let's cut a little bit out from between those front legs. And I want the chest to stay fairly big, so I don't want to cut too much off the chest area of my rabbit. And then once I'm happy with the shape, we can cover the body in the chocolate ganache as well. You might find if your ganache is starting to set a little bit and it's quite thick when you're putting it on, it will drag off bits of the cake and the cake will crumble and break. So just make sure the ganache is heated enough that it's nice and soft to spread on. Not too much that it's a bit oily. These are all the different colours of coconut that I made earlier. I say different colours, different colours of different shades of green. I'm just going to mix them all together. I tried to aim for a similar colour to the rabbit that I have like the little plastic rabbit, which is just a cheap one that I got from Home Bargains, I think it was. So all of them together. I didn't quite make it the same colour green, but it's fine. I was still fairly happy with what it looked like. So just looking at it now, before I start adding the coconut, there's just a few bits I do want to alter where I haven't got it quite right. So I'm just taking a little bit off the top of the nose. I still haven't finished ganache in it, guys. I obviously forgot the far side of it. I do finish ganache in it, though, don't worry. It doesn't stay like that. I'm taking some more of that leftover modeling chocolate. Now, I don't have a lot of that chocolate left, but I have enough for what I want. I'm rolling some little sausage shapes, and these are just going to go around where I want the eye area to be. So a little bit just below the eye. 
and a little arch just above the eye as well. So the one above I've, I've done slightly thicker, so it sticks out a little bit more than the bottom one. And I'm just going to press it firmly onto that ganache. Okay, let's finish ganache in this guy. You can see this time I, I melted it a little bit too much. So it was just running down my rabbit a little bit more than I wanted. So I really needed to let that firm up a little bit before finishing ganache in the rabbit. I'm just using a bit more modeling chocolate for the tail because I forgot to carve that in the cake. And I think his neck needs to be brought out a little bit more there. I could do this in ganache. Um, I've just stuck a bit of modeling chocolate on because I thought it was going to be quicker and easier. So once everything's fully ganached and set, what you're going to do is use some piping gel or cake gel and we're going to cover the whole thing in this. I'm actually just going to do it a little bit at a time. So I'm going to start working on the bottom of the body first. Make sure you apply plenty. And we're going to sprinkle on all that coconut. Now it does stick. But it didn't stick overly well when I just sort of put it on with a spoon. I had to actually press it on a little bit with my hands to get it to stick a bit better. So every so often just tip your coconut back in the bowl you're going to need all those extra bits that fall on the base now it's easier if you put it in something so i've got a big baking tray that's come out of the oven i'm going to put it in this so that when all the coconut drops on it it's all caught in this tray and then that's just going to make it a bit easier for me to gather it up and put it back in the bowl if i need to now i did have quite a bit of coconut i think do you know what i don't actually know how much was in a pack but i used i think a pack and a half of coconut i'll have i'll have a look at um how big the coconut packs were guys and i'll write it down below in the description bit for this so you know how much I've used I did actually have a lot left over though so you might not need to use quite as much as I did so you'll see I'm spooning it on and then pressing it down a little bit with my fingers if you want to wear gloves guys if you're doing a cake for somebody else and it's not for yourself you can obviously wear gloves this one is just just really for me and just keep checking if there's any patches that you've missed okay so I think my rabbit is taking shape he's looking a lot more like the one that I bought from the shops and of course, the one in the shop has a little tie around its neck. I'm completely going to cheat and I just cut the one off the one that I bought and I'm just going to stick it on with some piping gel around the neck of the one that I've actually made. And now he just needs an eye. And of course, guys, you can cover your, your baseboard as well. I realise I haven't shown you here me covering the board, but you can cover that up to make it look a bit nicer. I just actually forgot. So I'm putting a little bit of piping gel just in the eye sockets and I'm just going to roll a couple of black eyes out of modelling paste, keeping them fairly small, and we're just going to place those into each of those eye sockets. So it's not quite the same, but I suppose I don't have to show them together <laughs> with, with my cake. I'm still fairly happy with it. I've done quite a few different Easter Bunny cakes um, each year, so this is this year's. There it is, all finished. You can spend some time icing on that, tidying up the board if you want guys. I just got really lazy and didn't for this one. So let's cut into it and see what it's like inside. See what it's like inside. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this one. And I'd love to see pictures of what you guys have made using the tutorials. And you can tag me over on my Facebook page and my Instagram page so I can see what you guys have been up to. Thanks for watching. Bye. If you like the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.